We're actually in X-Plane 12, believe it or not. I never thought I would actually buy this thing. Well, you know what? I'm going to say it differently. I never thought I would buy it this early. Um, and with early, it's obviously, I don't know, how old is it now? Four months since it's released or something like that. Um, so I did buy it four months later, approximately. I think that's right. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, what do I think about X-Plane 12? Um, I honestly have to say I think it's unfair because a lot of people do so. I get why, but a lot of people like to compare X-Plane 12 with MSFS because MSFS has become the new standards, a new benchmark for uh, simulators, at least flight simulators, flight simulators. And um, I have to say that I think it's a little bit unfair because X-Plane 12 or X-Plane in general is just so, something completely different, has different goals. Um, the fair comparison would obviously be um, X Men 12 to X Men 11. What has it improved? What is it, what is better? Has anything gotten worse? And uh, I honestly think I honestly think that X Men 12 is definitely better than X Men 11. There are some things that I think are that have turned worse in X Men 12. For example, I think the turbulence modeling um, when you fly through clouds or storm, the turbulence f makes it feel like the airplane, even a such an, even a plane like the uh, sorry the A340. Uh, sometimes it gets thrown around like it's a Cessna, and that's one thing I definitely think is way too exaggerated in the simulator. However, that we've got volumetric clouds, they do look pretty good, although not as close as um, MSFS. They still look pretty nice, it's obviously a big improvement over uh, what x 11 has as default. And uh, the lighting is also very nice, though obviously not perfect either. It's still a nice step forward for x -Plane. Um That being said, the reason just because x looks a little bit nicer doesn't mean it's the reason why I want to buy it or you want to use it. Um, every time I fly MSFS, and I have to say, MSFS overall is the better looking sim for sure. Um, if we do want to compare those two sims, but the reason every time I fly MSFS or even P3, which I don't do anymore, but if I fly MSFS, every time I fly MSFS. I always miss X-Plane, and it's simply because of the flight model. The flight model in X-Plane is unbeatable. It's so good. It, makes, it feels so good to fly in X-Plane, and um, since I'm a user since X-Plane 9, so meaning, and I even started with X-Plane, that was my first simulator I ever owned, um, it's a feeling that you just can't, you know, let go of. It's, and it gets better. It's obviously, X-Plane 12 has gotten a, a major uh, physics update or flight model update, so it feels even more realistic. And um, it's something that I definitely do miss when flying MSFS. With FS, MSFS, the flight dynamics are very jittery. They're very, um, like flying a 737, like from PMDG, even that feels like flying a Cessna. Um, whereas a Cessna or like like a small plane feels like flying an RC plane. It's, it's, it does not feel good in MSFS. You get used to it, obviously, I d and I did and you learn to work with it, but it's it's still like, okay, I'm, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm flying a heavy airplane here. Whereas an X-Plane, if you're, if you're flying an A320 or even an A319, it does feel like you're flying an A319 and an A321. It feels much heavier, although not too heavy. When you're flying an A340, it feels like a really heavy airplane. Okay, I don't know what that was. Oh, I think I know, it was somebody landing, anyways. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Um, and I, that's one thing I absolutely miss about X-Plane. The other things I miss is obviously the tallest A340 or even having the variety of different airplanes. Um, my favorite airplane in X-Plane is in fact the A340. Um, it's well simulated, it is well modeled. Finally an X-Plane aircraft that is properly modeled in my opinion, although the nose could use a little bit retouching, but generally speaking, the modeling of this airplane inside and out looks absolutely, uh, looks really good. And I can't really say that for many other X-Plane developers. Even the Tolis, even Tolis with their A321 and A319, which the model is obviously not made by Tolis themselves. I think they borrowed it, or let's say, not say borrowed it, but bought it off of Flight Factor. So I'm sure Flight Factor gets a few percentages off their sales. I don't know how it works. Obviously, I have no idea, but um, those models are from Flight Factor. And to be honest, Flight Factor, we all know that Flight Factor's models are not very accurate and good. So, um... Yeah, but this, whoever modeled the A340 has done a great job. I'm really happy about it, and that's why I like flying this airplane. And the system modeling is great, too. So, 
um, two things that I really look in look in for when I buy a plane. That's those are two categories I really uh, look for in, a, in an add-on. And the Tolis A340 uh, does both. Um, so I'm really happy about it. And it's got CPDLC now. It's got the takeoff and landing performance calculators. It's got so many things. Of course, there are things that it can improve, but overall, it's it's um it's a great aircraft and i love it very much and we only have it in x plane another plane i really want to uh fly more is the q400 and especially the md11 uh, i want to master the md11 the md11 is definitely a very difficult airplane to master but uh, once you do i think it's very satisfying and i don't necessarily mean system wise i mean actually landing a plane it's it's quite difficult even for me who has a lot of experience in flight simulation uh, even for me, it's very difficult and kind of frustrating at times. But either way, uh, let's get this show on the road. Um, the flight time from today's flight in Munich to Newark is 8 hours and 47 minutes. That's flight time, um, and we're expected to leave here in about an hour. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're in the cockpit here. We're the first people on board, so we're going to do a couple of checks. Now, obviously, power up the aircraft. So we were just outside, we saw that the APU area is clear, which is good. Wheel trucks are in, parking brake is set. So we'll go ahead and set, make sure that's set. Any gear is down, and all the doors are up, which they were. And um, yeah, we're good to go on that part. We'll also check the re registration with our flight plan. So we have Delta, Alpha, India Hotel, Papa, and that's confirmed. Master switches are off, most selectors normal. Weather radar, the weather radar is off, predictor winter system is off, and the rest is as required for now. Landing gear is down, wipers are off, and we can now apply the batteries. So one, two, three, so APU battery. We'll verify that the exterior lights are all off, which they are, and then we can apply the external power. Only avail A is currently available, um, so we'll turn on A. That's all we need. All right, so the aircraft and the flight warning computers are powered up. We're going to go ahead and do an APU fire test. Looks good. The cockpit lighting is set as required. EFP will go ahead and start. It's all started and everything is set for now. And we'll initialize ACARS. So, in fact, we'll actually do that on the third FMC. Aircraft type is the AT4600, that's checked, with Trent engines. Eric cycles up to date, and we've got some stored waypoints which we might require for the flight plan. We'll go to init and confirm some of this information. IRS init. Um, we don't have that just yet. Go and press recall for three seconds. Everything is normal, so that's checked. Breaker breakers are all in. Logbook and minimum equipment list all checked and everything looks good. OEBs are checked and the aircraft, aircraft acceptance is complete. Preliminary performance determination. So we're going to go ahead and uh, head to our tablet. Go to take up performance, reset. We'll get some in weather information outside air temperature zero. QNH 1031. We'll go ahead and set the weather information here. 031 set on all three and we'll pre-calculate our information here we're expecting a takeoff weight of 313 300 so we're going to add one ton to that so 314 decimal three flex config auto so we'll see what it gives us but we're actually going to go with flaps three um, air conditioning off Anti-ice is not required, runway condition is dry. We're taking 08 left. Compute with flaps 3, config 3, flex 70, 
246. That is okay. So we're gonna also get our charts ready, so I'll do that here in a moment. And um, now do the before walk around check. So crew oxygen is checked, engine oil quantities are checked, hydraulic quantities are good to go. Our flaps, lever is up and the indication agrees. Spoilers are disarmed, park brake is on, and the accurate pressure is checked. We also make sure that we are RVSM capable, so um, the aircraft should have an RVSM certificate. Uh, we need to have two ADRs and two DMCs that are working, which we do, at least one transponder. We have both. One hour pilot function, we have both. One FCU channel, we have two channels working, two PFDs. Um, we do, and one flight warning computer, we have um, both. Uh, we would also do a altimeter check, but we'll do that later since the IRSs are not yet aligned. So, um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to request fuel. Let's we'll turn on the radios, although we don't necessarily need them. We're going to go to init, or int, request the low air. We have some air conditioning in here, and we're going to request fuel. Today's flight, we require 89.1. We'll 89.5, we'll request the fuel, and we'll, sh we'll be refueling here and in real time, which is pretty cool. Nice feature that they've added. Hopefully they'll do the same with boarding and stuff as well one day. I reviewed my NOTAMs, or reviewed the NOTAMs here at the airport. Currently, we don't have any NOTAMs that really apply to us, except for a VOR DME that is currently undergoing maintenance, which we're not supposed to use, at least in real life. And uh, we're going to go ahead and deselect that. Why not, right? We can simulate it, so we're going to do it. But for now, since that is all done and ready, we're going to go ahead and continue with the pre-flight procedure, so the overhead scan. Um, boarding is supposed to start, or was supposed to start about three minutes ago, but we're waiting for the fueling to complete, and then we're going to um, allow boarding to commence. Uh, we still have about 10 tons of fuel to board, uh, to load, sorry. Um, which will take about two minutes, two, three minutes max. All right, so everything is checked, crew supply, ground control comes on, this is at the captain. One, two, and three. Everything else looks good here. That's all checks, so we can check later. Everything looks good there as well. Three lights, strobe lights auto, navigation lights on. Field signs stay off for now, auto, arm, and the rest looks good, set to auto. Everything looks fine here. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit because it is a bit cut out. There we go. All right, temperature selectors are fine. This is fine. Everything is checked and looks good. Go to ELAC DC. On button, there we go. Below 60 amps within 10 seconds, confirmed. Same for battery 2, that's also checked. And same for APU bat. That's good to go. Fuel pumps also stay off for now because we're still refueling and boarding isn't completed yet. Oh, this looks good. Um, like these 15 degrees. It also looks good. We'll continue with the flow. This is all checked and set. Okay, they haven't simulated that yet. This all looks good as well. Um, UTC is checked and confirmed. Date is checked and confirmed. Auto checked. Everything looks good here, stowed, that's fine, that's all good, and we're good there as well. Next up, you set VHF1. This all looks good, I'm gonna set a tilt. That's set, that's all good as well. Okay. Either set to normal, those surfaces are idle, off, normal, Checked. 
and the rest is set here for the first officer as well. Okay. Now continue with the IRS init. Uh, so for the IRS, uh, so yeah, for the IRS init, so we're going to go to IRS init, and I have the position, the GPS position for our stand, four eight two one two, and eleven forty seven six. Let's cross check. So line on ref, confirm alignment. And fueling is completed, so we can now request boarding, which is also in real time. So it's going to take us 37 minutes to load 382 passengers, a little bit of cargo, and the fuel is going to stay at 89,500 load. So first we're going to go to ATC communications, message record, and we're going to erase all the messages that have been recorded here. Once that is done, we'll go to data. Position monitor, navigate select, and we're going to deselect deselect all the navigates that are unreliable. According to our notams, it is DME Delta Mike November. We're going to plug in Delta Mike November, deselect, and that is the uh, unreliable VOR that we're not going to, supposed to use. Let's go back to init. We've already checked the data, so we went to data, aircraft status, we checked all this earlier. Go to init, double check all this. So, Munich to Newark. Boston is our, alt al um, our alternate, Lufthansa triple to alpha, packs we have 382, cost index of 180, and our initial climb is 340, our initial uh, cruising level is 340, our ground temperature is zero, ripple pause average is 34,500 feet. Flight plan, Munich, departing runway 08 left, input 3 Quebec. None. Insert. Then for the arrival, we'll plug in. We'll go ahead and plug it in already, but um, obviously that can change, especially within the span of eight to nine hours. Um, Flozy four. No via for now. And Hannah. Insert. Plug in our alternate departure. Throw for right. Merit, so we'll insert that. And then for Boston, re Islas 27, which um, I cannot accept, so we'll do 2 2 left. Do Roebuck 3. And Merit. Insert. Fix information. Put the engine out of runway 08 left, it is just track 080, until 25 miles. However, what else I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my entry points as well as my um, exit points for the ETOPS. Our entry point. And then our exit point.
So we've set that. Flight plan is set. Alternate flight plan is set as well. Fixed information page is set. We'll continue with the RADNAV page. And it is an RNAV departure. We don't need any VORs really um, for the departure. Only thing we could require is in case of a go around, if we do return to the runway, to the uh, airfield. Um, the OTT is definitely back to init. We'll do a wind data request, wind request. And that is all checked. Init B, 89.5. Flight plan says an alternate of 4.8, so 4.9. We can even plug that in. Here we go, 4.9. And a 0 fuel weight of 225 exactly is checked. Trip 72.3 is what it's calculating. Um, Takeoff weight 313.3. 241.0 2.9 extra so that's 20 minutes flight plan 8 hours and 47 minutes that's exactly spot on distance 3744 3741 and extra fuel on board 16 tons if we were to check the flight plan it has given us 12.3 so that's checked as well that's fine if it's above it's fine if it's below that's something we need to consider Performance, flaps three. We've done some pre-calculations, it's like 70. Uh, one sixty nine, one sixty nine, one seventy three. We'll do one sixty five. Just have a little bit of margin. One sixty nine and one seventy three. Five thousand feet for the uh, thrust reduction acceleration altitude. We're going to go 1,500 feet above elevation as in they have an NADP2 here. So, uh, so that would be 3,000 feet. So 2,960 confirmed. 2,960 confirmed. And then for the engine out acceleration, will be 3,000. Of progress in case of a return, throw a left, sorry, eight right, plug that in. Cruise level 340, optimum 358, recommended max 391, accuracy high, so that's all checked. And go to secondary flight plan, copy active. The temperature is one degrees at this point, one zero three two. Fifty, so sixty at seven. An MDA and decision height is fine for now. So that is the MCDU completely programmed. And we can continue with the flows. So, flight directors one and two on. That's confirmed. Constraints on my side. Airport on pilots flying, uh, not flying side. So, uh, monitoring view are set and they're checked. They're tuned correctly. Initial climb is seven thousand feet. That's all checked. Oxygen test. We cannot do. So that's fine. That's all checked here. Everything is set and checked. Climb now, blue flight directors 1 and 2, 7100. Altimeters are checked within 75 feet. We cannot check for RVSM. Within 75 feet. Um, that does look within 75 feet. So we're good there. We're okay for RVSM. Altimeters are also the same. So that's all checked here. And seatbelt signs can also now come on. All right, now we just wait for boarding to complete and get the load sheet, and then we're ready to go, pretty much. All right, so the boarding is just completed. Everything is loaded. We're gonna start. We're starting the APU now, um, and we're gonna go ahead and update our values. So our zero fuel weight is uh, twenty-two 
225 exactly tons with a zero fuel weight of 24.1. Block fuel stays the same. Performance flaps 3, flex, I already computed them. Flex 70, 165, 169, 174 is checked. And a trim of up 3.2. The pumps can now come on as well. Before start checklist above the line. Copper preparation completed. Gear pins and covers removed. Signs on auto. The gears are nav. And we'll confirm the alignment here. Zero. Perfect. Fill quantity 89.5 tons is what we're expecting. And it all looks balanced. That's checked. We got some in the tank here. Pickup data is set, bear ref 1032 set on all three, and that is above the line complete. Okay, beacon comes on. Lights are armed, bus server is idle, parking brake is set, active pressure is in the green, stern doesn't engage, so below the line. Windows doors closed, beacon on, bus server is idle, parking brake is set. Four star checklist is completed. Tau connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start the engines. Starting engine one. Starting engine two. Running three. And starting four. Alright, it is our started. Back to normal. Off. Anti ice not required. Weather's armed. Weather trim neutral. Plus three. Trim is set. And signal given. The tax clearance has been obtained. Set the taxi. Those like the taxi as well. Parking brake can come off. Movement, brake check, pressure zero. Alright. Get out of 
out here. Zero eight left confirmed. Cabin crew advised, lights on, packs off, radar, TCAS, predictive winter system set, and auto. Alright, we're ready to go. We're clear for takeoff, landing lights on. And we're ready to go. Like 70 SRS runway northwest blue.
pops up. Condition altitude. Standard set to passing five four thousand eight hundred. Start, let's do 5,000 now. So that's strike minus or plus minus uh, 20. Ten gears up, flaps are attracted, packs are on, barrel ref set standard. After takeoff checklist and climb checklist completed. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Hundred above. Two hundred. Minimum. Continue. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, re 10, 5.
All right, parking. Parking brake or chocks are set. Engines are off. Lights are off. Fuel pumps are off. Parking checklist is completed. And we cannot request the push at the uh, gate. It is a very, I mean, believe it or not, the real A34600 actually did park here, so or does park here, if it, or has parked in the past here, at exactly this gate. So I'm very curious how they did it because this is this was not easy, and I didn't do it very well either. So uh, yeah, that's not what I meant to do. So, either way, that is the end of the flight. Really hope you guys enjoyed. The landing was relatively smooth. I just don't like when I landed. I just everything was blinding, like the whole reflections and everything. I didn't see the center line. I couldn't judge it very well. So, um, I mean, I wasn't too off, but still. At any rate, it was minus 160, which is pretty good as well. But uh, yeah, anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you all in the next video. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and peace!